Let's pick up where, where we left off last week. We ended halfway through the first road of the summary set. Today, we're going to finish the road. But my recommendation, after years of training forms and competing in forms all the way up to nationals, I would recommend practicing them in chunks. That's how I trained myself and how I found it to be the most effective. Instead of just trying to go back to the beginning and start over every single time you add new moves, the beginning of the form keeps getting better and better, but the section that we add on, they get worse and worse as we go further into the form. So I would recommend that you do these four independently until you feel really solid with them and then stitch them together with the first four we did and you've got a complete first road. Let's get started. We left off with lifting hook here. We want to add crushing fists next. Keep the weight on the balls of the feet. Remember, the front part of the foot. Unload the front leg, open the foot, step through and punch. Next, from the crushing fist, we're going to do Blue Heron Spreads Wings. Funky name, I know, but devastating takedown from the clinch, one of my favorites. From here, we bring the back foot in and come up. Put it together. Now, after that, we're going to add white eight falls and hold. From here, let's put it together. Now, let's add the final move, which is the tiger tail throw. Tiger tail throw is tricky because we, only, we don't have a partner that we're actually latching onto, so you gotta have really good balance for this part. But we're gonna go from, I'm gonna show you this side first, then I'll put it back together the way that we were just doing it so that you can follow along. So here, once we're in white eight falls and hold, remember this was a takedown, but we're gonna come back up out of this. Now we start to reposition, do the stealing horse, and come back up. Down, reposition, throw. Shouldn't be heavy on your feet there, it's bad for your knees as you do that transition. So you gotta go to the stealing horse, the stealing horse our foot was this way. Now we're gonna to have to turn it. Ideally, we turned it around like this. Probably not gonna happen because it gets a little awkward with your hips and your knees. So once we come out of that stance, we go in maybe 90 degrees. And then as we step, we release that foot. Remember, we're staying light and then we cut up. 
White eight falls in hole. Pop up. Reposition. Throw. Now, hate to leave you on that cliffhanger with one leg up in the air, but if that's a problem, just change it to that mountain climber stance. Very similar, I'm gonna use the same mechanism. Just put the foot down instead, it'll give you guys an easier transition. So you cut in, you go here, put the foot down. That's the end of the first road, guys. Something important about forms is some of them are throws. Some of the techniques, actually a lot in my form. So a lot of the movements, what I see often is people speeding up forms just for the sake of speeding it up. How fast can I do it? Like it's some big competition. And then they lose the emphasis of right moment for power, right moment for twist, right moment for speed. Well, that's where knowing the context of the form is super important because if you know what the moves do, then you know where the emphasis belongs. That's key. So don't just speed it up just for the sake of speeding it up. Try to follow the emphasis. You'll see, like when I throw a strike, that's gonna be much faster. When I throw a kick, it's gonna be faster. When, I throw, when I'm using a throw or a grappling technique, that's always slower, that whole phase. The emphasis is strong. The emphasis may look fast, but there's a different dynamic with the energy that goes into it. Hopefully that tip helps, especially those of you that are more advanced, that might give you some insight into where you should be focusing. That's the end of the first road. We'll be back next week with the follow-up. We'll start road two.